We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love and your truth. We thank you for the price of Jesus, for the seal of the Spirit, for the anointing that breaks the yokes. We thank you for everything you've done, what you're doing, and what you're getting ready to do. We thank you for our family and the body of Christ, for answered prayer, for rescuing and revival. We thank you. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for new life. Life. We thank you. And we ask for your forgiveness of every word, thought, and deed, every work of the flesh, anything we've touched, of uncleanliness, of thoughts, words, and deeds, and anything we came in agreement that would offend you. Please, Master, wash us with the blood and remove those things Bring your light and your truth into every area of our life. Fill us with your spirit that we may be one. Bring us to a place of rest and refreshing. Oh, Lord, we need you. But most of all, we desire you. Bring us, Lord, and position us where it's no longer we that live, but you that live. And grant us access tonight. Yes. Change us. Bring a garment change tonight, Master. Bring your glory. He breathed the love from a cotta of yellow mocota cans and shanongo dash and the glia brahoson. A brown total of yellow motal of yellow machlechle and gracatosa. A broho socha chlechle and roparro boto shata cassiangasia. And then a viano motier of holoma chlechle and regli and brown to go fro. A frohosa. Restore to us our first love. And grant us the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and thirst and hunger for you. That we may be about your business. And true spirit and in power. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody a hug and tell them this is your night. Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Amen. Would you turn to Psalm 133, please? Oh, God is good. Psalm 133. Thank you, my Lord. Psalm 133. Is everybody there? Psalm 133. Would everybody read it with me, please? Behold how good it and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. For it is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Now this is very powerful, and I want to share something with the Spirit was sharing with me. You know, we got to understand again on that we are in the wilderness. The whole world is in the wilderness. Amen? And, and in the wilderness, two events are going to happen. The rapture and the wrath. And there were things that were established in the wilderness. And one of the things that was established in the wilderness was God establishing priesthood. And in this, he said that there were, he would raise up a nation or a kingdom of priests. 
Amen. And, and Aaron was one of the priests, wasn't he? And in this he said that how good it is and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And what I want to share with you during this time that we're in right now, you know, the body of Christ is divided. There's much division in the body of Christ. And I really believe that some of this is caused because of the not fulfilling of priesthood. And in this, the Lord said that it's good for us to dwell in unity. And in this unity, now he's using Aaron as an example here, isn't he? And he's using Aaron in the garments, and he's using the oil as a representation of the anointing that's coming down. And in this, I really believe that in this wilderness, that's why where we're at right now, we know times and troubles are not only here, but they're going to get worse. Does everybody understand that? Now, I want you to understand that being a believer doesn't excuse you from things of trouble. Hello. The Bible says that the path is narrow and difficult. So it doesn't mean you won't go through stuff. But I'll tell you, you'll go through it. And it's used to perfect us. You know, when you take coal and squeeze it, it turns into a diamond. When you take gold and put it under fire, it turns transparent. So I want you to understand in this, in this desert process that we are in, we know that God is bringing us to the end of ourself, but he's also trying to bring unity in the body. And sometimes unity in the body doesn't come unless there's disasters. Trials and tribu tribulations and all kinds of stuff happening. Did you ever notice how everybody came together in New York at 9-11? The problem is it didn't last long enough. Then people began to get divided again. I mean, the country is unified. Even in government, it didn't matter if they were Democrat, Republican, or whatever. It had nothing to do with what their party was. It was about people and people caring for people and loving one another. It had nothing to do with anything else, but now it's gone back. And God has put the whole world in the wilderness, and we have been in the beginning of birth pangs, and we are getting ready to enter tribulation. And that doesn't mean that the body of Christ will be removed from tribulation. I doubt it. I believe they'll be removed for great tribulation, but I believe that we'll go through the first three and a half years of tribulation. Because during that period of time, there's going to be tremendous unity. And this unity is going to bring something. It's going to bring rest and refreshing. Now, remember, we talked about in the area of um, we are basically a timeless generation. And in this timeless generation, it, it causes us because we come to a rest. And in this rest, there's timelessness. In other words, you don't care. You allow God to build. You stop building. So there's things we are in right now, and I'm sharing this with you by the Spirit, that there are disasters coming. There are things that are going to come, but you're going to go through them. Has everybody got it? It's the same thing in the wilderness. One of the things that's happening right now is that God is reestablishing his priesthood. His what? Priesthood. And it is important that the priesthood be established in the body of Christ because it's going to be established with unity, rest, and then the refreshing. Is everybody okay? Now, if you think about it, when they were in the wilderness, um, Moses, the people were totally dependent on God, weren't they? For food, for clothing, for everything. They were totally, remember, they left with all the gold and all the silver and everything else, and there was nowhere to spend it. <laughs> they couldn't spend it anywhere. They had to be totally dependent on the Lord. And when they became, got thirsty, they began to grumble and complain. Anything they wanted, they grumbled and complained. Now, God gave it to them, but he also said, because of your grumbling and complaining, your heart is hardened. And you can't enter my rest because of rebellious heart. 